Fish, there's a dozen strikeouts for Shohei Otani. 3-2 locked him up. Handcuffed him with a fastball. Some days the pitching matchup tells the whole story when you pull into the parking lot at a baseball game and today is one of those days. Michael Kopech on the hill for the Sox. Shohei Otani on the hill and in the batter's box for the Angels. And somehow, some way, he's been a better hitter on days when he pitches. So we'll see what Andrew Benintendi and the White Sox can do against the Angels after a tough 2-1 loss last night. But it could be a difficult day for both offenses as the Sox and Angels play game number two. Thanks for joining us. Jason Benetti, Gordon Beckham. You heard about it during the pregame. We just talked about it. Kopech versus Otani. Yeah, it's going to be awesome to see these guys. It was a tough loss for the White Sox last night. They got to find a way to bounce back, but unfortunately, they're going to have to bounce back against one of the game's premier pitchers and one of the best hitters in the game in Otani. So we'll see how they can manage through that lineup against Otani, and uh, maybe they can get even up the series. We know how competitive Michael Kopech is, and we know that sometimes you do see an even livelier fastball in big spots. Tonight could be one of those nights. Yeah, his fastball plays up, and people aren't really hitting it this year. He's been really good in his last seven, but let me highlight this. In May, 2.75 ERA. In June, 2.66 so far. The biggest thing for Michael is to find the strike zone. He's got to find a way to throw strikes. Those 14 uh, walks that you see there, nine of them have come in the last two starts. So he's got to find the strike zone, be aggressive in the strike zone against this team that isn't hitting very well on the with the Angels. No, they're not. Mike Trout is out of the lineup today, but Otani is still in the lineup. And he's one of those guys we're going to be talking about for, for centuries in this game. Yeah, you're going to remember him for a long time. He's doing things that not anybody has really done in the game. So it's really special to watch. Listen, what you're going to see is eight home starts this season, three and two record with a 2.47. Let me highlight it. Has a career 2.11 ERA in home games, which is second lowest total of the last 100 years. That's minimum 40 games started. This guy is dynamite whenever he takes a mound, but he's really, really good when he is at home here in Anaheim. The Sox have only scored one earned run against him ever. Shohei Otani on the hill. Michael Kopech, his opponent. We have every angle for you, and you're going to want to watch from anywhere you can find it in the ballpark. Kopech and Otani together on the hill next. That ball's hit well. Up and out of here for Robert once again, and the Sox have the lead. How about that? An absolute rocket in a heartbeat. High fastball, clock to left field. Does it have enough? Yes, sir. Oh, he rode another one out. Late in the count, early in the night here on the West Coast at a 1 0 lead. Can Luis Robert Jr. do it again? Three homers the last two games for the Sox 25-year-old sensation out there in center field. This is since May the 1st. He has an OPS of over 1,000. 17 home runs for Robert Jr. since May the 1st. And people are still filing in here in Anaheim to see the Sox and the Angels tonight. Pedro Griffol has this starting lineup for the Sox today. Slugging percentage against the fastball. Otani throws 30% fastballs, averaging 97. Robert Jr. has just been a wrecking ball to the heaters so far. 679 this year. Robert's going to need to be all that he is today against Otani, who takes the mound, 16th start of the year, a 3.13 ERA. He has been as advertised. He enters today leading uh, the majors in opponent batting average, ranks fourth in strikeouts, and is eighth in whip. This guy is legitimate. He's a two-way player, as you obviously know, seeing the homer that he hit a mile high yesterday, and he is really, really good on the mound. It's going to be fun to watch. Hopefully the White Sox can get to him early and often. He struggles sometimes in that first inning. Hey, let's check out the defense presented by UI Health in the outfield. From left to right, 
Ward, Moniak, and Renfro in the infield. Renhifo, Fletcher, Drury, and Moustakis. Otani on the mound, and Wallach behind the plate. Here is the plate he's going to be working with. Roberto Ortiz behind the plate. Strikes 9% below average inside to lefties. 6% above average away to right-handers. And you're saying, well, that's the same place. Well, the answer is sometimes the batter being in the box changes the look. First inning brought to you by Toyota. Enjoy the night, folks. First pitch, ball one from Shohei Otani. It is yet again a spectacular night here in Anaheim. 72 degrees like we're in a dome, but we're outdoors enjoying nature and enjoying two lively pitchers. Andrew Benintendi in the air left center field that's a long way back there and playable for Mickey Moniak as Benintendi nearly had home run number two. I thought he might have off the bat Gordon. It was close and you could see Moniak heading to the track. It looked like there's a chance if it continues to carry just a little bit further it's gone and it would have been one of those things where we have this huge buildup of who's on the mound and then all of a sudden Benny just wrecks that story with one swing of the bat which would have been nice unfortunately just a little short out there in left center. Not by much but just short and so one down here is Tim Anderson to take that sweeper which is one of the best pitches in Major League Baseball for Shohei Otani. It's not your typical sweeper. It has some massive vertical drop as well. And there's a cutter. He throws like 150 different pitches. It is officially, according to Sadcast, seven pitches. He's got the kitchen sink, that's for sure. upstairs one and two to illustrate how difficult it is to size up what he's going to throw to you. Here are the numbers on a one two count from Otani this year. This is what he's thrown on one and two. So uh, you know good luck. Mm -hmm. Just mix in a slider just to mess with you a little bit. This is fouled away by T.A. who is two for his last thirty four as he stands in. Shohei Otani and Babe Ruth inextricably tied together the only players ever with 500 strikeouts as pitchers and 100 home runs as a hitter. Tim stays alive again still one and two. Lowest career home ERA as you mentioned off the top that 211 number Jose Fernandez the late great. Miami Marlin with a 149 at home. Otani at 2-1-1. There's been some discussion that maybe pitch com, uh, not pitch com, but the pitch timer has affected Otani. He's been a slow worker, pretty slow in the past. Yeah, it would make sense, right? And he's also a two-way player, so he's getting in the box, which is taking more of his energy. He likes to work slow because so he can regain that energy. It would make sense if it jammed him up a little bit. That was with one on the timer and a check swing and strike three. Just a vicious splitter for his first strikeout. Our stats with lows. Luis Robert Jr. Back in the box, according to the stats in Major League Baseball, this is across the league, not just American League. 986 slugging against the four seam fastball is like of another galaxy. Absolutely electric coming off his bat, that four seamer. That's why I don't think he's going to see a lot today. He might get shown a four seamer right here with the first pitch, and I think it's going to be a lot of breaking stuff. First one here is that sweeper, strike one. Let's count how many fastballs Robert sees we tonight. Yeah, we should. I wouldn't throw him one. I mean, he's just been annihilating them when they're in the zone. Splitter on two. We mentioned it yesterday. Luis has been very strong on two strikes recently. A lot of damage on two strikes, including the home run yesterday. A one hopper. I was talking to Jose Castro today and I was asking him what's the difference why is he not swinging as much why is he hammering four seam fastballs and Jose said that 
basically he, they've just tried to change his bat path and it used to be a little bit um, uphill and it's gotten a little flatter and he thinks that that is the reason why Robert Jr. is just having one of those seasons. Boy, crushed a high fastball yesterday. That was another sweeper. If you have an uppercut swing on that high fastball, you're probably not going to do what you're he did You're generally yesterday. underneath. And what he was saying is they flattened it out. But he said that he's also starting to ask questions and listen. And like he trusts Jose Castro to give him good information. Splitter. Two strikeouts for Otani. Michael Kopech, your serve next. You want to give a first pitch fastball to. He singled on the first pitch yesterday. 814 against fastball slugging percentage. Otani 652. Wallach in some short time in the eighth spot at 646. Kopeck will be featuring that fastball today. He's been pretty shaky the last two times out, and the biggest reason why is because of the walks. He's not finding that strike zone, but so far this season, this is his 16th start of the year. He's 3-6 and six with a 4.06 ERA. When he is aggressive in the zone, he is really good. First pitch is a high fastball fouled away by Moniak. As you see, his arsenal, four-seam fastball, he uses that a lot. One of the top in the MLB in terms of fastball usage. He'll throw that slider and then mix in a few others. Rolled to first, and Gavin Sheets feeding Kopech for round number one. Let's check out the defense presented by UI Health for the White Sox from left to right. Benintendi, Robert Jr., and Jimenez out there in the infield. Berger, Anderson, Andrews, and Sheets. Kopech on the mound, and Yasmani Grandal behind the dish. Huge ovation for Shohei Otani. Who hit the home run last night. Tie the game at one. Opec to his opponent as the pitcher today and Shohei Otani somehow this is really ridiculous. This is when he starts on the mound compared to games that he doesn't pitch. He has a batting average up a hundred points. I, that is unreal Gordon. He likes to help his cause. Why wouldn't he right. Yeah, but like it's like he like he needs to get better right. Like he needs to raise his level from when he's not pitching because he's already a very strong hitter. It's pretty amazing though. I mean it, and it's also a great thing for him because he knows he has a chance to change the game for himself and give himself a little more cushion. Oh my goodness gracious. Jaw dropping power on the day that he throws once again. Ball just sounds completely different coming off his bat. I mean, it just jumps. This pitch is going to be right down the middle, though, and not surprising that Otani did some damage to it. Not a very well located fastball, and when you give that to this guy, he does not miss. Second home run in as many nights. Look. We watch the White Sox every day. We follow the White Sox. We are embedded with the White Sox traveling. And you played for the White Sox. I grew up a White Sox fan. Watching Shohei Otani, even against the White Sox, is one of those experiences that feels like it's beyond the scope of what we all used to comprehend in baseball. 100%. I mean he's just fun to watch. It, it, I don't know that everybody at home can see it but the trajectory on those homers the last two nights is unreal. Yeah it's different it, like nobody can get like last night especially it, it went 465 and it 36 degree tra trajectory which is way above what is normal for that kind of distance. I mean, it's just unbelievable to watch the ball come off his bat and he just doesn't have much mechanics in his swing. It's all just strength. To anybody who's watching this that says, okay, we get it, Otani's good, I would say next time he's in Chicago, watch him play. Because Michael Kopech has very good stuff. And Dylan Cease has very good stuff. And Otani took them both deep 
very loudly. Brandon Drury into center field. And that's out number two. Here's the homer for for Otani just a batter ago. Watch where the fastball's located, okay? So right down the middle, and everybody knew right away when this ball leaves the bat, it's gone. I mean, misses his spot though. I mean, Kopech wanted that ball down and away, gets it in the middle, and that's what Otani does with pitches that are in the middle of the plate. As you said, it's just different watching him play. It's it's uh, it's a unicorn. I said that last night. You don't ever find this. This isn't something you go find. Um, it's like Deion Sanders playing two sports. That, I mean, that's yep. kind of like that's what he's doing. What he's doing is unprecedented. Yeah, and, and again, as we said in the pregame, it opens doors for a lot of people to try it. Not that it's easy to do by any stretch of the imagination. As the contact is happening, watch these two guys behind Otani. They're having a conversation, and they're like pointing the other direction. And then, well, I guess we need to pay attention now. That that is. The contact off his and Robert's bat last night, actually, it's the kind of contact that snaps you to attention from whatever you're doing. You don't want to not be watching. That's what that, when they're at the plate, when Robert and Tani are at the plate, watch, because you might see something you've never seen. That's a great way to put it. Otani now, in four straight games against the Sox, has a home run. And he's given himself a one nothing lead. Line drive left field base hit for Moustakis. They're big into antlers here in Anaheim now. What with his trade over here from Colorado our live lines presented by points bet tonight. With Taylor Ward coming to the plate Otani is seven and a half strikeouts the over under Michael Kopech. At six and a half, both these teams do swing a lot of first pitches, which might keep the strikeouts down a little bit. Here is Taylor Ward, former first round pick, who takes a fastball high. The only thing Otani didn't want to be a part of in this first inning was the helmet celebration. He helped buy that helmet that right. they used for the home run celebration, but he we waved it off. He said, I'm good. Nope. I'm just going to go rest. I'm pitching. I don't know if you all noticed. <laughs> right. I have other things to do. It looked like they were trying to put it on Ipe, his interpreter, <laughs> in the dugout. That. Love that. Get him involved. Two two is up and out. Three balls, two strikes on Ward. Yeah, here's Otani coming into the dugout. He said, "No, keep it rolling. I don't need that. I'm pitching." And then watch. They're trying to find somebody to put it on. Mustakis at first, two down, one run in. That's line to left field toward the corner and foul. Yeah, here. I don't want it. I didn't hit it. <laughs> All right, fine. That's kind of funny. Three two. He missed with a slider, and Hunter Renfro is going to bat here in the first inning.
Last we talked about Hunter Renfro. He was in as a defensive replacement last night as Ethan Katz is out of the dugout. 23 pitch first inning so far for Kopech. I was looking at that total before the at bat. You could tell that really Kopech needed to get out of that inning without getting that pitch count too high. I mean, the last two times out, he's had 4.1 and four innings respectively. And you know the White Sox want to see him stretch that out a little bit, get him into at least through the fifth and into the sixth. That way he can hand the ball to that bullpen with a little bit of length and allow them to kind of that allow Pedro Grafal to basically put his chess pieces where he needs to to basically finish off the game. It's it's tough when you get behind the eight ball early and throw that many pitches because it's hard to it's really hard to have an inning where you kind of flip the script on that where you have like a five six set you have to have like a five six seven pitch inning to flip the script to catch up basically. Correct. Yes. There's also the piece where Michael Kopech has thrown 82 innings already his career high is 119 and a third and we are exactly at the halfway mark of the year tonight. And so I know that's part of the calculus for the Sox as well measuring out how many innings and what that workload is going to be as Hunter Renfro has crushed the ball here at the big A just like Jake has and Luis have at uh, home for the Sox. Right back to the slider so Yaz has called three straight sliders including the ball four pitch. It's really interesting too because his four seam fastball is is his pitch right opponents own a 213 average this year which is third lowest in the MLB on a four seam fastball. Mm -hmm. So they're going away to it from it right now because they probably see something in the slider that makes a little bit more sense. Part of that's got to be Renfro as well and how yeah. well he's hit fastballs this year. That's right. down the middle two and two Hunter Renfro 289 against fastballs 206 against breaking balls two on two out two two from Kopech just guided it foul on a slider All right, how many sliders can you see in a sequence until you feel comfortable with it from a pitcher? Well, generally, if you see a strike in a ball, you've got a pretty good idea. Okay. Especially if you can lay off a decent pitch from the pitcher down and away. 2-2 two -two heater is low, so now it was a 3-2 slider against Ward. What does this look like, you think? I think it's got to be a 3-2 slider. Miss with that fastball. It looks like he doesn't have great feel for it. It's either in the middle of the plate or off the plate. Got to find a way to throw a strike. A good pitch right here with that slider. Pitch number 30 of the inning. It'll be for Kopech. And that was a fastball right in the middle of the plate. Got away with it. That was one of those ones. You, sometimes you foul one back and you're like, well, he wasn't really that, that on it. We hi highlighted that last night against Mike Trout. In the ninth inning, he, he was laid on some fastballs, but he was fouling them straight back. That one was fouled straight back because he was all over it. 3 2 heater takes him down. Might have been ball four, probably was. Instead, Kopech escapes. Shohei Otani will throw it tonight, but he's also given himself a 1 0 lead. One to nothing Shohei Otani on the hill after a one two three first with a couple of strikeouts and here is Aloy Jimenez to look at a first pitch sweeper ball one second inning brought to you by Menards. That's line to left field Jimenez has extra bases very likely and this rings off the wall. Eloy a leadoff double against Otani. Time now for tonight's fresh stats. They're presented by Febreze. It's Shohei Otani on the mound against Shohei Otani in the batter's box. He's plus 118 batting average, plus 14 in the homer differential. I mean, his hockey plus minus is ludicrous. 
get that line back on the ice. Ground ball second base side for Andrew Vaughn. Brandon Drury throws him out. That moves Jimenez to third and now it's up to Yaz to make some contact here to drive in the equalizer. Yeah that's a pro at bat right there by Andrew Vaughn. Knows he's got a uh, guy a second Eloy Jimenez. Good nice double and a hanging breaking pitch. The at bat before but good job by Vaughn. He's just giving himself up. I'm going to move the runner over. Give Grandal a chance to drive him in via a sack fly or really anything can get him in. Although the infield for the Angels is in on the grass. And on the pitch, Drury was coming forward, so is Fletcher a little bit at shortstop. So they're not exactly on the on the grass. They're they're playing in what you would call like two depth because they think that they can still throw Eloy out from that depth. Where did you prefer as an infielder? In this sort of situation, I either wanted to be on the grass or, or on the dirt significantly because I didn't ever want a hop to hit the edge of the grass and dirt because it's a different hop. You get a different hop depending on where it lands. Fastball tied him up one and two. So where they're playing here, you're saying sometimes you don't get a true hop. Well, you just don't. If, if you do have a hop that's coming close to the edge of the grass and dirt, mm -hmm. you're you're you don't know exactly if you're if it's close you don't know if you're going to get that hit, that hop that you're looking for because if it hits the edge of that grass it'll skip and if it hits the dirt it's going to bounce a little bit higher grass will be a little bit lower but they're betting that they can throw him out from that depth that's the biggest what they're deciding is like we can throw him out from middle depth we don't have to be all the way in and it gives us a little bit more range. Long hold. Like a really long hold. And the pitch is just outside with a splitter. Tried the corner, missed. Home plate umpire Roberto Ortiz not giving Otani anything off that plate. See if it goes back there. And Yaz gets a piece of it. Otani does call his own pitches through pitcher Pitchcom. Some guys are doing that this year. They've cycled through a bunch of catchers due to injury this year. Wallach, who caught Reed Detmer's no hitter last year, has the gear on tonight. Eloy at third, two and two from Otani. Struck him out. High heat up to 98. Chicago White Sox presented by Guaranteed Rate. With Guaranteed Rate, same day mortgage, you'll be ready to move into your dream home in as little as one business day. Ready to make your move? Yes. Then visit rate.com to get started today. Thanks for asking. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you for but being here. But I am engaged. not moving. Did that this past year. That's, not going to do it again. That's true. No thank you on that. First pitch, Jake Berger. That's not a bad approach against Otani, right? Sometimes the first pitch of the at bat is the best one you're going to get, or at least the most meaty. Might find most, the biggest part of the plate that you're going to see the whole at bat. So got to be ready, especially against a guy like this, because if you get behind the eight ball with him and how many weapons he has, tough, tough to get knocks down on the count. You saw what he does first time through the order: a batting average of 105 and very little damage at all in terms of slug. It goes up. The second time through the order and dips again the third time. One and one to Jake. Jimenez at third. Anything with the slats of sunlight on the mound here? I was going to say, this is one of those times of the night where they have this couple of weird openings where. The sun is setting on the west over here. It's going right through the concourse, and obviously you can see it on the edge of the pitcher. It's really difficult to pick up the ball when that pitcher is in that sunlight. You would think that it's the opposite. Hey, he's in the sunlight. You should be able to see it. It's really not. When the when the pitcher's highlighted and then there's dark behind him, even though it's just a little bit different of a shade, it 
it does play a major effect on the batter. So this is it's not going to affect him right now, but it will probably in the bottom of the inning. Maybe something spinning here on two and two. And it was a high splitter that Jake just clipped. What do you got on high splitters? There's the ones to hit. I mean, if you're going to get it, that's the, that's the pitch you want. If you get, are getting splitters from Otani, you want them up in the zone. It's when they start on the bottom third of that zone and dip below right before it gets to the plate. That's when it gets really effective. Making it work here. Two and two on Berger from Otani. Jake will stay alive one more time. Foul ball second deck. He's had some good swings here. You'd like to see him pay it off with a base hit. Tough guy to do it against, obviously, but some of the swings, you like those passes. You can always see when a, when a guy's up in the plate and he looks hitterish, you can always see it. And I, I feel like this is kind of a hitterish at bat by him. If he gets another mistake, he might do some damage with it. Two and two. It's a high sweeper. Came out of his hand funny. It looked like three and two. Yeah, backed up a little bit, but good at bat by Jake Berger right here. He's up against one of the best pitchers in the big leagues, and he's able to battle. Let's watch this last pitch that he threw. See, gets away from him a little bit. Leaves it up a little. Jake, good job to battle to three two. Here we go. Very good miss. That was. A dastardly sweeper from Shohei Otani. And the inning's over. Four strikeouts for Otani and a home run so far. Kopak back to the hill next. Luis Renjifo, Chad Wallach, David Fletcher coming up here in the second inning. And the first pitch fouled away. One nothing Angels on a Shohei Otani home run. We thank you for joining us tonight with Gordon Beckham, Jason Benetti. And one ball, one strike on Renjifo. 17 home runs last year, a career high for him. Side, two balls, two strikes. Uh, Kansas City has just taken a one nothing lead on Cleveland in the bottom of the eighth inning. So Minnesota's lost already. And I know there are folks out there, as that was close pitch, saying, well, look, the Sox have to win games in order to catch Minnesota. And yes, I understand that completely. That's the way it works. We like to keep you apprised of what's going on around the league because it is part of why the Sox are still alive. This season is there's ball four it's outside Red Hefo walks. Michael Kopech one strikeout so far the Sox nine straight games ten or more strikeouts tied for the franchise record with the team from a couple of years ago the uh, 2017 Guardians had 13 straight. This could be a tough night to do it with the way the Angels are attacking Kopech especially the way it's gone so far only one K so far for Kopech obviously he's only through one inning. That can change in a hurry, and we hope it does. Well, that kind of swing and miss will get you some strikeouts. There you go. Logan Ohapi, one of their young catchers, is out after shoulder surgery. Tore his labrum earlier this year. So Wallach, the 31-year-old, getting some run here. Also, Max Stassi was dealing with a hip issue in spring training, and so he's on the IL. And you see Tim Wallach, former Dodger infielder, Chad's father, CJ Krohn, former Angel, Jeff Devannon, Jerry Devannon. There goes the runner, throw down to second base is in time. Renjifo, who was traded for CJ Krohn, Caught stealing. 
Nice throw right here by Grandal. I think they're going to keep this. I don't think that they're going to look at it. Nice throw and good tag. Looked like Elvis did a good job of shielding that base with his foot. Look at him put his foot. This is a little veteran move. Interesting, and now he's off he the base. Off. I think that he came off the base right there. That's why Rob Drake waited to make the call because Renhifo was actually in before the throw, and then he came off in part because of Elvis's position. Because of his foot right there, that that momentum, his hand hits that foot, and he comes right off the bag. Good job by Elvis to keep that tag on there. Watch it again. And this is, oh, he came off again. Got it. He might have been out multiple times. He, might, he was safe multiple times and out multiple times. And, uh, well, you can't rescind the out. If you're out once, that's all they need. Three and one is low. That's the second walk in the inning for the Angels. Wallach takes this one, and the Sox are fortunate on the caught stealing. Follow our Sox Insiders at NBCSportsChicago.com. Presented by Nationwide Agent Jeff Vukovic. Get to enjoy knowing the Vuk as much as you do the jingle at JeffVuk.com. Because Nationwide is on your side. Crispy. Well, look, the pregame warm-up was effective. Very clearly. You can... People say there are limits to how much 90s rock you can listen to before a baseball game. I can tell you there are not. No, we're challenging that notion on a nightly basis here in Anaheim. Wallach at first. And he runs, swing and a miss, throw it on to second base. He's out. Wow. So. So far in the bottom of the second, it's I'm going to walk and we're going to throw him out. That's what we're going to do. This obviously a hit and run. Obviously a hit and run. Fletcher does not get a pitch anywhere close to the zone because Kopech really hasn't been able to find it. It's an interesting hit and run for the Angels because Kopech can't find the zone. He's giving bases up, but they, they chance it. And Grandal does a good job, put it on him. Andrews with another good tag. And Kopech is just missing. He's nowhere close right now to the strike zone. He's missing with that spiking that slider and he's up with the fastball. He's just kind of lost that release point. Got to find a way to lock it in. He's gotten two gifts on the base paths. I wonder if any time in Major League history there have been three walks and three caught stealings in the same half inning. We might find out. Yeah, I don't really want to. But I don't we want might to either. Anyway. But you can tell. You can tell by uh, Kopech's body language. He's not feeling good right now. He's frustrated, and I think they need to have another meeting. Honestly, I know that sounds like well, they have one last inning. Well, it, he he need they need to have a conversation with him and make sure that like he just locks it back in because he's got good stuff. It's like just just trust your stuff. Try to find it. You know, it's not as, it's not always that easy, right? Start spinning a little bit out there, but. Just try to find the zone. I know somebody's tweeting. Try to steal second, cowards. Right now. Fletcher at first, and Moniak swings at the first pitch again. How about that? Three straight walks, two caught stealings, and a swing at the first pitch after all that. I think the best chance for a, another throw down to second base is with two strikes. Fletcher trying to just either get a stolen base or get out of the inning. Fletcher's a guy that will go. He can run a little bit, yeah. so might, we might see it. We, there's a chance. I can see it now. The Angels are the first team since 1842 with their starting pitcher homering in the ball game and three walks and three caught stealings in the same first three innings of baseball. Two one. Fouled away left side two and two. Kopech is one pitch away from getting out of this. One pitch away and you can just tell he's super frustrated with this inning. You can tell 
by the way that he's releasing that ball and he, you can see the frustration and I can only imagine it's a very lonely place out there when you can't find the strike zone. Three balls and two strikes. I mean this has to be a fastball here right. You would think I mean this is going to be pitch number 54 for Michael Kopech. You can tell by the body language that he's just not feeling good. Obviously you can tell by the results the same thing but he's frustrated out there. All it takes is one right here. Three balls two strikes. Here it comes. Left hand side. And Berger. Makes the catch. To finish the Angels. Who kept trying to steal second and that didn't work so good. Tani has a home run and he's got these four strikeouts. Yeah, he's got four K's and that's his forte punching out hitters. That's exactly what he's been doing today. He's looked really good at the plate, obviously, with the home run, but he is as advertised on the mound. And he doesn't even look like he's really emptied his 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 war chest, so to speak, because he doesn't. They, yes, he's humped up on a couple fastballs, but everything else has been kind of like I'm just trying to feel my way through this game so far, which is scary because you think that there's another gear that he actually might have. He's given up the one hit, a double to Eloy Jimenez. He'll face Sheets, Andrews, and Benintendi. And Benny actually gave it a ride to center that was just short of extra bases, maybe a home run in the first inning. As Gavin Sheets. Stands in for a first look at Otani. Third inning brought to you by Hyundai. Got a first pitch sweeper. Tough one to leave on the bases. They get a first first guy up at the plate in the top of the second. Double. They get him over. Unfortunately, they're unable to scratch a run right there and tie this game up. Otani waited until one on the timer there. And Gavin flies it foul on a cutter. One ball, one strike. And when Otani can get out of that inning like that, it just gives him more confidence, and it's not like he needs any more right now. No, we talked about in the pregame the goals that he set for himself when he was younger. As this is grounded first base side, that's a fair ball. Mustakas feeds Otani, who you may have heard is an athlete, and he makes the catch for out number one. Sox fans join us for Miller Lite baseball and brews starting at only $19. This offer includes one ticket and two beers to new and expanded seating locations across the ballpark. Must be 21 and over with a valid ID to purchase tickets. Go to whitesocks.com slash brews. You know, in his 20s, he wanted to be the team MVP of the World Baseball Classic team. He's wanted to throw a no hitter. He's been the MVP. He wanted to throw 108 miles an hour as well. All part of his goals that he had well before he made it stateside into Major League Baseball. But the dedication he has to his craft and his routine allows him to do this sort of thing every day. That's the only way that he does this is a very strict routine. I've got to imagine when starting starting pitchers it's a great job to have but they do do things on the days that they don't throw. They have to work on their arm. They have to go run. They have to do things. They have to throw long toss do all these things to keep their arm in shape. And he's doing all that while also hitting and getting his swing ready. That one nearly nipped Elvis two and one. There have been times where he's on a very regimented six man rotation. At points this year it's been a six day rotation and a five man rotation overall for Shohei Otani but he has mentioned that fatigue might be a little bit of an issue here and there and you wouldn't blame him for that as Elvis flies this ball out to center and Mickey Moniak out near that triangle for round number two. But Shohei Otani does make time every once in a while for snack food there was a pitcher floating around of him with his hand in a bag of Funyuns on a bus earlier this year and who among us hasn't tried to sneak a Funyun or two got to have a Funyun in your life every once in a while. That's it's just only natural especially when you're in the big leagues and all you can eat sometimes is chips. <laughs> That's right. And, and you know a lot of teams nutritionists and uh, I know Carlos Correa reputedly has made sure that there's basically no bad food around the Minnesota Twins. Well that's no fun. 
But if Shohei can eat Funyuns. If Shohei can eat Funyuns, anybody can eat Funyuns. That's right. If he was in college baseball, that would have been an NIL deal yesterday. Two strikes on Benintendi, who went after the second pitch he saw in the first inning and fly deep to center. One ball and two strikes. Pac-Man has great seats for Otani's start tonight. Obviously very well connected here in Anaheim. Fouled away. Nearly two, I believe that's Blinky back there. Almost got the foul ball. There's Pac-Man chomping away while Shohei Otani. Catch them all. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's Pokemon. Oh. Yeah. What? Pikachu. Yellow, Pac-Man, yellow. No, no, no. I mean, I obviously know the difference. I thought that that was their slogan. <laughs> I think that's Pokemon. Okay. I do. But I could be wrong. I should know this. I played Pac-Man growing up. A ball, two strikes. Upstairs. It doesn't look like a comfortable at bat against Otani. Absolutely not. And it's interesting because he's throwing those high fastballs. I don't think he meant to throw the second one high. I thought the first one he threw high that Benintendi was on purpose to set up another pitch. Let's see if he goes back to something off speed below the zone. 2 2. He's tried that splitter upstairs a couple times and he's missed. Doesn't look like he has great feel for that splitter quite yet. He's left a couple of these up. Yes, they're away and it's a ball, but that is not the location that he wants that pitch. If he leaves that in the middle of the plate, anybody's liable to take that one deep. So he's looking to try to lower that pronto. He went cutter instead. Wallach shows the ball. Strikeout number five for Shohei Otani. Just one run on the board so far. The Angels have stranded a couple of runners in a one nothing lead. First time the Sox in the bottom of the second inning, first time the Sox caught two base runners in the same inning since June of 2016 against Kansas City Royals. So Yaz does that to take down Ranjifo and Wallach. And here is Shohei Otani, who homered in the first inning. He already has four three hit games this year as a starting pitcher. He is the first guy to do that. Since Warren Spahn in 1958 for the Milwaukee Braves. 1 0 is upstairs. Kopek still fighting his control even after the time away from the mound. Yeah, change up, first pitch, nowhere close, and then that slider kind of backed up. He didn't have that release point. Still looks like he's struggling from that last inning. 3 0. Full take here. No. Not for Shohei. If he gets a fastball right down the middle, he's going to be swinging. A little generous of a strike. Three and one. See this last pitch. Kopech. Got a little bit of help. We'll see if it helps him out get back into this count against Otani. Otani can also run as we've he does it all. That's all I can say. Way outside. He's going to have to run here. Let's walk number five for the Angels. Here's Yasmani in that second inning, the two caught stealings. Nice exchange right there. 0.76 seconds. Very good. Threw a good one down there and then didn't have to do as much on this one because it was a hit and run and Wallach's running. Not as good of a runner. Clearly a hit and run played by the Angels and doesn't matter. Yasmani with two good throws right on the money gets both of them. Stat cast presented by Google Cloud. This to the right side. Elvis has to run to track it down and make a brilliant play to get an out on Drury. Otani to second, but what a play. This is a great play. Drury gets 
absolutely jammed for the best coverage in the game. Let's check out the T-Mobile coverage cam. Gets jammed right here, tries to hit the hole in the four hole, and Andrews does a good job to track it down. Now, the weird part about this play is because he got jammed, he's getting a ton of weird spin off of that ball, but does a good job. You see how he really attacks that? Uh, attacks that hop, he has to do that because of the spin on the ball. If he doesn't do it, it's that ball's going to eat him up. And it's you probably ask, well, why is it going to eat him up when it's hit that softly? It's just because of the spin on the ball and how deep it caught it. Probably had some pine tar on it as well. So he's attacking that ball on that hop. Not a, not a tough hop, but if you don't attack it, it'll eat you up. It's a long way to go, too. We'll see it again in a moment. I want to know what the most important thing right off the bat is for Elvis here. Well, I mean, he just, he really had to go a long way. Look at where he starts. He, you can tell the jury's just trying to hit that hole. Goes a long way. These are plays you didn't see last year because of the shift, because you probably would have had three, three infielders on the left side of the infield. It might have been a hit. In the air left side, Berger gives it a run. It's foul. But the biggest thing is you've got to figure out which hop you're going to go attack. He, he was trying to figure out, am I going to get try to get the first hop or on one hop, or do I need to let it bounce one more time? That's all the stuff he's calculating in his head just from natural ability and seeing this from, from years of experience. And when you're playing second, you've got a little bit more time than shortstop, so you don't have to attack. Elvis made the play and got that first out for Kopech. And a swing and a miss, strike three. He was ahead in the count, and a curveball breaks down Mustakas, two gone. This looked like Kopech found a little bit better rhythm and good feel for the slider. That's a good pitch. Strike the ball right over the middle of the plate. Kopech still frustrated. You can see it on his, his body language. He, he want, he's annoyed that he's out there and he's walked what he has, but he's got to find a way just to, just to pull it back in. He's got, still got a chance. He's got his guys in position with in the third inning to stay in this game and possibly win it. Here is Ward. First pitch swing. So Robert, when he makes the catch, he'll have the second first pitch out of the inning that started with a walk and came after an inning that had three walks. One nothing. July 5th, it's Blues Night presented by Kordak as the Sox take on the Blue Jays, 7, 10 p.m. Kordak, your next day service, Metal Deck Supply Company. To purchase tickets, go to whitesox.com slash promos. The Big A here in Anaheim. Sox have been to the West Coast twice now in the last three weeks, which will foul up your uh, sleep schedule a little bit. I was going to say it's going to ruffle some feathers. It will. Here's some socks math for you. Hashtag socks math for his correct answer. Gets to introduce socks math tomorrow. Sea Strength 2022 was your winner yesterday with the Rod Peru factoids. And your socks math question. You just dream it up. There it is. Number of years Billy Pierce played for the Sox, multiplied by all star teams he made for the Sox, plus the number of shutouts he threw for the Sox, minus the number of consecutive batters he retired to open the game 65 years ago today. Gordon's got it. He's written down his answer. Fourth inning brought to you by the Village of Bedford Park. First pitch foul for Tim Anderson, who ended up seeing seven pitches in his first at bat against Shohei Otani to a strikeout. Otani just 47 pitches so far. And why not mix in a curve? Yeah, just to sprinkle it in. He throws it 3% of the time, so yikes. He's thrown one slider all year. Check swing, two balls and a strike. Cleveland just beat Kansas City, so the Guardians are a half game out of first. Minnesota is a game under 500 in first place, 81 games through the season. That's the halfway mark. Minnesota is under 500. 
in the air foul through the blue sky. Minnesota after finishing up with Atlanta in a day game tomorrow will head to Baltimore to play the Orioles over the weekend for three while the Sox are in Oakland. Be great if the White Sox could take advantage with Minnesota in Atlanta. He's gone to that cutter quite a bit on two strikes tonight. He's thrown a lot of cutters. Six strikeouts for Otani. Luis Robert Jr. against the four seam fastball. 11 home runs this year. He had seven combined in his first three seasons. This kind of talks to what I was mentioning earlier about Jose Castro saying that they've kind of flattened out that entrance into the zone with his barrel. That's a lot of work in the cage and kind of understanding why your barrel might be dipping. It's not just this easy thing. It's like, well, flatten out your bat path. No, it doesn't happen like that. So there's been a lot of work that he's done. He's listening to uh, Jose Castro in the way that he wants him to have that bat enter the zone. That's that's a lot of work and a lot of feeling. Feeling feeling your swing and knowing what position you have to get to to execute that swing. Otani just threw the fastball equivalent of the 100 in ski ball. Got to throw it hard and way wide to the left. I visited Chuck E. Cheese the other day and played a little ski ball. Nice. 2 and 0 at this point. At this point, might as well walk him. Right? Because. Middle middle fastball is not a great idea. Not good for Robert, but if I'm Robert, I'm, I'm looking for it. You've got to try to find a way to change the momentum in this game, and you're the guy to do it. In the air left field side, Ward does have a play on it. And two down. Caught it off the end of the bat. He was looking for it, and he got it. He just was a little bit out in front of it. Here's the pitch sequence, pitch by pitch. Sweeper down and away. Another one further away, but that was the heater version. Sweeper again, and then he gets a pitch to hit. Look at this, right in the middle of the plate, but just was trying to pull it a little too much. He knew he was going to get a fastball. He's like, all right, don't miss this. Get it, catch it out in front. Do some, do some damage. And just the thought of doing something like that takes you a tick off of what you just naturally do. And maybe if he had thought, okay, hit this ball to left center, maybe he hits it out. Seemed like he wanted to hit it just straight left. And that little bit, he knew he was going to get a fastball. He just caught it out a little too far out in front. I think what you just said makes it clear again how difficult it is to hit at the major league level. Because you're in the most advantageous position possible. As this is skewered to right field on a line. Renfro is there. That was a seed off the bat of Eloy Jimenez. 3 0 and 2 0 swings hit hard, but not hard enough. Season news and rumors. Get your daily recap of the NFL weeknights at 6 on NBC Sports Chicago. Bottom four. One nothing Angels with the lead. Hunter Renfro takes ball number one. There was this tweet years ago by John Manuel of Baseball America at that point. Hunter Renfro was walked eight times in a doubleheader when he was a high school player intentionally eight times in a doubleheader and as the story goes a uh, scout came down the bleachers and screamed to the opposing coach I'll buy you a steak dinner if you pitch to it <laughs> I'd awesome. like to see him hit I, I came a long way to watch this kid I <laughs> yes. need to actually provide a report which is kind of crazy <laughs> when you think about it right? that they're gonna have to go provide a report on a couple of at bats right yes it's it's wild and that way it kind of highlights how hard scouting is oh yeah you get a glimpse no matter what right you can't watch every at bat of every player it's not possible and it's also ridiculous that a high school coach walked him that many times that's hilarious but such is life you want to win the game you play to win the game that's right in the air right center field and eventually Elvis goes out to make the catch and now a message from powering Chicago. Whether it's lighting up Chicago or helping a neighbor in need powering Chicago's commitment to better construction better careers and better communities never quits. 
Powering Chicago, IBEW Local 134, Nika, Chicago. He's Gordon Beckham. I'm Jason Benetti. We thank you for joining us from here in Anaheim tonight. And Michael Kopech has found a way around five walks so far to trail just one to nothing. And honestly, for Kopech, he got helped by the caught stealings, but he pitched over that leadoff walk in the third very well. He's finding a way to get back into this game, too. This is his 70th pick pitch, which obviously you don't want to see in the fourth inning. But if he has a quick inning here, there's a chance he gets through five. And that's like that's giving your team a chance even if you're down uh, a run or two that's that's a that's what you want to do you want to allow the bullpen to help you stay in the game right field when he catapults it down the line into that corner with that curvature and when he is sprinting for third very easily a stand up three base hit. Renjifo jumps all over this ball right down the right field line slider middle of the plate for a strike hits it right down the line it rattles around there always a difficult one to figure out exactly how that ball is going to rattle around sometimes it gets caught right down the line but that one bounced out right to Eloy unfortunately long way to go and he's unable to get Renjifo at third. This is an above average triples park in part because of that wall out there in right field but also the gaps. Renjifo with his eighth career triple and now with the infield in Wallach trying to drive the ball. Is it there for a strike. Nice and cozy on the inside corner one and one. The infield very close, bearing down on the plate. It's a slider that misses two and one. Infield drawn in. They're going to try to cut Renhifo down if he does go. A lot of times the Angels in any team will tell the guy go in contact or not before the pitch is even thrown. Good fastball. What decides that depends on the team. I think it depends on the runner. It depends on the runner at the plate. It depends on where the defenders are. There's a lot that obviously goes into it. My guess is they've told him do not go if it's a ground ball in the infield right now. Make it see it through. Fouled straight back. There's your Sox math winner for tonight. And we have a new champion, Mark Ski, 44. Billy Pierce, 13 years of the Sox, seven All Star teams, 35 shutouts. He opened the game 65 years ago today with 26 consecutive outs, and he gave up a hit on batter number 27. Near perfect game, 100 was the answer tonight. He gave up the hit to Ed Fitch. Gerald with a capital G hmm. Fitzgerald Fitz and then the capital G and then capital Gerald. G Gerald yep capital G Gerald that's an old timey nickname three and two ran Hefo at third one out a check swing that would have been ball four Wallach was just trying to avoid the uh, rhinoplasty bill the bat. You don't want that bill. No. You have a nose for how much that costs, right? No. <laughs> but I've got to imagine it's pretty hefty. It's not good. Three and two. That's fouled back toward us and just above the booth. Gordon was playing. Security guard for John Reynolds, our stage manager. JR is okay. Oh boy. All right. Wow. JR had a heart attack. Best friends. <laughs> JR's got his binoculars out. Make sure he's okay. That's upstairs. It's ball four. Walk number six for the Angels tonight.
And so now it's up to David Fletcher. Be careful for a bunt or something right here because Fletcher's really good at handling the bat. He can safety squeeze, which is generally a safety squeeze is put the ball down the first baseline, get the runner to come home even if you're out, run scores. He's really good at handling the bat. Be, be prepared for something like that if you're a White Sox defender right here. They're playing for two in the middle of the infield. First pitch checked his swing. He went around. Yes, he did. Strike one. Yeah, Berger's playing in. Sheets is playing in. He's got the runner Wallach next to him at first. Damon Mayshore, the first base coach over there. Going to be a tough guy to double up as well. So if they do get a ground ball, they're going to have to hustle. Well, a strikeout would be mighty nice here. 0 oh, 2 on Fletcher. Just as it looked like Kopech was going to be able to get out of this inning, as I said, the 70th pitch was coming up. A couple pitches later, Renhifo with a triple and now a walk, and he's at 82. So it's going to be hard for him to get into the fifth at all. Line drive slashed foul. How about that bat path for Fletcher? I've, it's, I've always kind of marveled at it. David Fletcher is a gritty little player. I played against him when I was in Tacoma, Washington with the Seattle Mariners. His bat path is not normal. It's a very, like, chop wood type of bat path. But this guy found a way to do it very well in the big leagues for a long time. He's a good little player. He's a winning player. Tried to throw. Fletcher a double rainbow there. It was way high, one and two. He's the type of guy that a lot of people probably said, hey, he'll never, he'll never make it to the big leagues. He'll be a good player, but he's never going to be a big leaguer. And he proved everybody wrong. Guess what? On the ground, second base side, rolling to Andrews on the dive. Safe at first. The Sox may want to challenge this. Real time, it was close. Regardless, the Angels get a run. Question is, did Elvis pick up an out on Fletcher? Really close. Great job by Elvis to knock this ball down and even have a chance. Fletcher can really run. Here's the end of the play. Let's see what we got. I think they got him. I think that's an out. Yeah, they're going to look at it. Wonderful play by Elvis Andrews. Chicago is challenging the safe call at first base. I have to, yeah. I have to, I have to talk, we have to talk to Gavin after the game. <laughs> I don't know. You see how Gavin's standing on the back? Yeah. You know, you expect sometimes when the, the first base was on there to, to make sure that you get your back foot on the bag and you're stepping towards where the guy's throwing it to you. Gav looked like he was definitely off the bag looking to see if he could field a ground ball and just never got back to the best position. Doesn't really matter. I think he's going to be out. Looked like an out. Looked like real time an out. Looks like on replay it's an out as well. Uh, Gavin got the job done, but he yeah, that was, uh, it, it was it that was not what you normally see. Well, you know what probably happened is he probably got back to the bag. And he's like, well, I'm not in great position here, but if I try to find the bag all of a sudden and move my feet around to get in better position, I might miss the bag. So if I do that, then I even look, I, I you know, it's yep. worse. Ethan's like, what are we waiting for? That's an out. Yeah. Let's see. After review, the call on the field is overturned. There you go. The runner is out. Chicago will retain their challenge. But a, a wonderful play by Elvis Andrews. I mean, he really ranges to his left. And I mean, it doesn't save a run because the guy's at third base, but it definitely saves a huge inning right there and an important out for Kopech as he's trying to get through this fourth inning. Another, another nice play. Sorry. I love Ethan's look there. But you normally don't see a whole lot on his face in game, but he was like, come on. He's out. And he was. So a run home is a breaking ball as Tuki Toussaint is getting loose in the Sox bullpen. We saw him throw four innings the other day on Wednesday against the Rangers to help out the Sox bullpen. Taking the most of his opportunity. Here is a waiver claim from Cleveland. Elvis has made three dazzling plays including the block of second base on the caught stealing tonight. Yeah, he's a good player. I mean he's a, you know Elvis does a lot of things right on the baseball field. You, you definitely see him do a lot of things right especially defensively. 
He's got uh, he's got his head in the game the majority of the time, and he just makes these plays. Like that was that was a great angle to be able to cut that ball off and have any chance at first base. One and two. Way up and out, two and two, and a big batter here. Not only because it's two nothing, there's a runner at second, but Otani's next. Huge batter. It's huge for a lot of different reasons. My guess is you're going to give the ball to Tuki Toussaint if you make it through this inning in the bottom of the fifth. I think this is probably it for Kopech. So we want to try to find a way to get out of this, and definitely don't want to see Otani again. Oh, we almost had a fan go down trying to catch this fly ball. Everybody's okay. Everybody's fine. All right. Managed to right the ship there right before it got disastrous. 90 pitches for Kopech 42 out of the strike zone. Two and two. Wave and a miss. Good slider in the zone. And the innings over. The Angels get one more, but that's it after four, two nothing. Statcast Shohei Otani is really, really good, but according to Statcast as well, the strikeouts come into your living room. Two on the splitter, two on the cutter, one on the sweeper, one on the four seamer, and at points he has just put the ball wherever he's wanted to. Yeah, he's been as advertised. He's been able to throw. He seems like he's been in complete control on the mound, and as you can see at the plate, also in complete control. Fastball right down the middle, didn't miss it in the first inning, and got this game going for the Angels in the wrong direction for the Sox but 110 miles per hour off the bat and that was 35 degree launch angle yesterday was 36 and it seemed like yesterday's felt a lot higher than even today's was and it was only a degree of difference but it definitely comes off different when it comes off his bat like that you know he's done things now where he's just going to break his own record, but he's got the hardest hit ball and the fastest pitch in this game. And back when he hit second and pitched against the Sox back in 2021, he was the first pitcher to bat second since 1903 in Major League Baseball. Now, he's done it so much that it has become routine for Angels fans and routine for baseball fans to see Otani do it. But until he showed up, this was not possible. Fifth inning brought to you by GMC. We are professional grade. Yeah, I was talking a little bit earlier about uh, Deion Sanders. It's yeah. kind of like a Deion Sanders moment. Well, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Bo Jackson the same, in the same breath. I mean, what he's doing is that kind of special, right? You see a guy play multiple sports, you see, but what he's doing is one sport, but doing it in multiple ways, which is unbelievable. Had Bo Jackson not gotten a hurt, he would have been, and he still is. I mean, what he did on the football field and the baseball diamond was outrageous, but he would have been this type of guy had he played for as long as he would have loved to, as this is popped up by Vaughn. Otani, why not? That's the catch. Why not? The old P1. Don't see it often. You, you know, don't. There's a joke, uh, Adam, Adam Dunn. Yep. Adam Dunn would call the pitchers kickers. <laughs> and I definitely think Adam Dunn would say, that's not a kicker. Although he did catch it a little on the heel, and he sang sorry to the White Sox dugout for getting too close to them, I guess. I like when he caught the ball, too. He, was, he almost was like catching it as an award, right? Like he hopped into it. He was like cheering for himself as he caught the ball. He's doing it all. How would you attack him at the plate? Hmm. Gosh. Early. Swing early. <laughs> yeah, that's what I figured you'd say. <laughs> Swing early. A little bit up. Two balls, no strikes on Yaz. Yeah, you got to have a good approach. Swing early, and you hope that that sweeper, he can start it at your hip, and it's actually something you can turn on because when he keeps it down and away, it is nasty. I mean, you see what he's done on the mound. He also in the home run derby a couple of years ago he hit six home runs at least 500 feet.
three and oh to Grandal. That's called a strike. That was up. But again, at points 3 0 strike zones, research has shown get a little bit larger. That is a base hit for Yaz into right center field. Catch every pitch with the fastest internet from Xfinity with a reliable connection you can count on in the clutch, even during peak hours. The next generation Xfinity 10G network. Good job by Grandal to not allow that ball four pitch to get him off his game. Liner back up the middle, and White Sox have got a base runner. Got to try to make it make Otani pay at some point. Or else this could get out of hand. Two hits so far for the Sox. Strike one to Berger, who did see eight pitches in the second inning to that strikeout. Yeah, he had a competitive at bat until the last pitch where Otani threw a really good sweeper down and away, and he uh, tried to foul it off, was unable to do so for a K. Can't do anything with that. Don't love that. No, Berger doesn't love that. He's like, this guy's good enough. Can't give him off the plate. If there is some hope, though, for the White Sox, the best time to get Otani is the first, the fourth, and the fifth innings. Okay. By numbers, he's given up the most runs in those innings. Nine in the fourth so far this year, seven in the fifth. So he's been known to give it up in the fifth. Only seven runs, though. To right field by Berger and falling into the glove of Renfro. Throw to first, and he throws a dagger to double up Grandal. Oh boy. Small flash sale presented by Miller Lite. From now through July the 3rd, you can purchase tickets starting at just $7.04 to select July matchups, including the Cardinals weekend series. Don't wait. This offer ends soon. To purchase your tickets, go to WhiteSox.com slash July. July. You been said around, July. Been around Ben McDonald too much. July. You've been around me too. That's true. Here's Otani. First pitch. Call to strike. He didn't like it, but he also did get a similar call on the mound. It's the rare time where you can say that nowadays with That's the pitchers right. not batting anymore. The chance of MVP goes up for the guy who won it two years ago, and it's 0-2. I love the fact seeing Kopech back out on the mound. He has not had that great of a day, but he's been battling through it. He hasn't had his release point. That's been the biggest problem. Those walks have really made it tough on him. But. He's found a way to get out here in the fifth. I know that you want more, but 
He's still grinding through it. Hopefully he can find a way to get through this inning. A couple of fastballs and an 0-2 fastball is low. Well, Tukey's ready to go. If need be. Oh. Ooh. Mm. You kind of want that one. You definitely want the one that goes across the plate. <laughs> wow. Eight. That's the Otani strike zone. Two two. That's low. Three balls, two strikes. It's it's a real thing when when there is a great hitter at the plate, they get pitches like that. You think so? Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. You they, do. A hundred percent. Okay. All right. Don't get me involved. Okay? I will. Okay. All right. We'll talk about it. Three and two is a hit for Otani in a right field. That's a tough one for Kopech, and we go to the studio to see what's coming up on Subaru White Sox post game live. Tremendous wardrobe chooser Chuck Garfine and Ozzie Guillen. Gentlemen, thank you very much. This is a big batter here to make sure the Angels don't build a rally with a 2 0 close range lead on the board. One and one to the Oregon native Brandon Drury. He is from Grants Pass, Oregon, which is west of Medford. Southwest Oregon, just north of the California border. Breaking ball hovered in three and one last batter here got to be last batter. Yeah. He's gone out there in the fifth. He probably should have struck out Shohei Otani did not get the benefit of a call base hit later and this is more than likely going to be his last batter. Three and one. Yep it's high ball four seven walks for the Angels so far tonight. And here comes Pedro. So two on nobody out. He'll go to the bullpen. Kopech really was done in by the chain the, the ball the balls constant balls. A lot of walks but he grinded it out got out there in the fifth. Best lineup in banking, see Lakeside Bank at Halstead and Pershing, where every client has their own banker. Lakeside Bank, it's about time. Here's Tuki Toussaint. He had a good outing against the Rangers on Wednesday to give the White Sox some innings. He provided a good amount of length out of that bullpen. 49 pitches, as you see, 4Ks and a couple walks, but zero hits. Good job trying to earn himself a spot in that White Sox bullpen. He's bounced around a little bit. He's from Pembroke Pines, Florida, 27 year old, still a young guy in a lot of ways. He'll throw a curveball, four seamer, splitter, sinker. He'll mix it up pretty good between those four. See how the approach changes here against Tukey. Mike Moustakas takes a curveball for a strike. So two inherited runners. Otani at second, Drury at first. Yeah. 
Roll to first base. Sheets goes to second to get one there. The pass back to first is on time to Tukey Toussaint for a double play. Wonderful job right here. Good job by Gavin Sheets to attack this ball, not allow it to bounce too much. He attacked, made a good throw to Tim Anderson at first, uh, excuse me, at second, and Tuki Toussaint with a great job to make sure he was over there for the relay throw. Good job by him being there. Huge double play for the White Sox. Really keeps him in this and hopefully staves off a big inning for the, for the Angels. It's up to Ward. Had a first pitch strike, nothing in one. The Angels stranded two runners in the first, one in the second, one in the third, and one in the fourth. They've left five on so far tonight on seven walks. Strike two nestles in on the inside corner. Yeah, the seven walk, I just can't, you know, Kopech has got great stuff, and you just, you just wonder, you know, you want him just to attack because he's got the kind of stuff where he can attack and get everybody out. So I, clearly it's 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 probably part mechanical, part mental. And when you're in that space, because this has happened three times in a row for him, when you're in that space, it is it's on your mind. It's like, well, it's you should not think about it. Well, it, it's on there. So how do you deal with that? It, it, it's I mean the worst part for a pitcher too and I'm not a pitcher but I know the worst part when they have something like that going on and they know they have to wait at least four days to go out there and fix it it can eat away at you you have to find a way to disengage the pressure basically builds with every it day. builds yeah it builds so it, there's good and th good and bad things about being a position player you have if you're starter you go out there and you have another chance to go after it tomorrow and do some good. You don't have to wait that long to get back out there. It's also bad when you're really struggling because you know you got to go out there and grind. And there's another walk, number eight tonight for the Angels. Tune into White Sox pregame live all summer long to catch the Miller Lite Bar of the Week. We're profiling some of the best places in Chicago land to kick back, enjoy a cold drink, and watch a Chicago White Sox game. Sponsored by Miller Lite. And I've got to imagine, too, as a pitcher, if the emphasis is to throw strikes and you've been thinking about it for four days, guess what you're going to be trying to do too much is throw strikes. And when you're trying in baseball, it generally takes you away from being good. Does that mean thinking too much? Uh, it, it, it's a weird thing. Like I was talking to Lance Lynn about it the other day. When you are trying to throw your cutter a certain way, it's not going to do what it's supposed to do. You just have to let your body do what it naturally knows how to do, what you've learned over years. You put your brain in the middle of that and, so, and overthink it, it becomes a totally different ball game. You've got so much time between, not a lot of time, but you've got time between pitches. You've got time between at bats. Baseball is as much mental as physical a game as there is. It's, it, it's probably more mental than it is physical. This is high in the air, left-hand side. Berger into foul territory, and he's not going to have a play. And in that case, what you're talking about, if you're going to walk seven guys, all you can do is pitch around it if you can, and Michael Kopak has done that for the most part tonight. And he did it the last couple times out in a lot of ways. He, he, he danced around some of these walks so he's finding a way to get out of it which is to his credit he just he's getting behind the eight ball nice stop by yeah has got the body in front of that one two and two to Hunter Renfro who is a new dad as of June the 7th daughter Allison born well now 20 days ago All right mazel congratulations to Hunter and his wife Courtney Struck him out. Good fastball from Tukey Toussaint, and he comes in to quiet another Angel uprising. 2 nothing. High-speed action. Shohei Otani's day on the mound so far. He's been as advertised. Two hits given up. He's got six Ks. More importantly, he has not walked anybody, and he's been all over the strike zone. 
throwing some really good pitches. There have been a few good at bats put up by the White Sox where they've grinded out some longer pitch at bats, but unable to do really any damage on him besides the double from Eloy. Two hits. He has had the single, but got doubled off in the fifth. And by the way, you just saw Otani's line there, and you'll see Gavin Sheets' stats as he walks up here. Uh, our graphics operator, James Scola, who works hand in hand with Chris Kampka, building all the fun stuff you see on our graphics on this White Sox telecast, and he's done it for years and does a remarkable job. He and Kampka, quote unquote, team font, right? That's what uh, they're called in the studio. Uh, his dad, Jerry, James' dad, Jerry, who is a lifelong Sox fan, just recently just got home from open heart surgery. And we want to wish Jerry the absolute best in his recovery. We are so glad to have James on our show. He figures out a way to make everything in Kamka's mind and everything that we want to put on the screen to be on the screen in beautiful form. And to Jerry, we're glad to have your son. We're glad you got out of surgery well. And uh, we hope the Sox can get you a win here in Anaheim tonight. Evidently, Jerry, the day he had the surgery in the hospital, he was asking how the Sox were doing. Not that anybody should have a requirement of how big of a fan are you. Right, right. But that happened. Yeah. And so that's like an 11 out of 10. Sox fans are, are passionate about these guys and they want to see them do well. They always have. Very passionate about their team. Glad Jerry's doing well. Me too. Because we like James a lot. Yes. One, two. I don't believe I told you the sixth inning is brought to you by the Illinois Lottery. But I'm glad it you did. Didn't seem like the right moment. That's earlier. Right. But we pivot on this broadcast. Two and two for Gavin Sheets. And a wave and a miss. That is the splitter he's been trying to throw tonight, Gordon. That's exactly what we've been talking about. He had been missing that splitter up a little bit, not really in the middle of the play, but up and out to these lefties. And then right there, you see why he's so effective as that splitter starts. That's a strike the whole way there. Gavin thinks it's a strike. And then literally the last five feet before that gets to the plate, it just dives underneath for a ball, almost loses speed at the last second. Seven strikeouts for Otani, and Elvis takes one of those sweepers. That's not your typical sweeper that we see, which has that horizontal break. It's vertical. It has vertical, uh, more vertical, it seems like, than horizontal. Generally, that sweeper is more horizontal than vertical. And then you see the cutter here. Which what? look very similar. Right. So, I mean, it, I think he's just adding and subtracting sometimes with that sweeper, which it's going to come, you know, pitch track or whatever. You know, looking at these pitches, mm -hmm. he's going to call it a cutter because he's just adding a little bit to that sweeper. See, look, he's—I I figured that would be a little bit lower in because terms of, of uh, and because of the distance that it traveled downwards, that hard, that vertical break. That was clearly one that was going to—he was trying to add and subtract with that sweeper. Otani misses there. That's his first walk. It's the first Sox walk presented by Feldko. But for Otani this year, he's walked at least three six times. So far tonight, he's been around the zone. White Sox have done a pretty good job having some putting up some good at bats against him, but he's just been very good. But problem for the White Sox is he's only got 78 pitches. I mean, it, he he can throw 100 easy. And you look, maybe one, two starts before the All-Star break. Could be just one, depending on what they do with their off days and their rotation. There's a strike. Fastball one and one. To update you on the AL Central, Minnesota has lost again. So the Sox do have a chance to pick up a game. Cleveland already has, beating Kansas City two to one. And the Tigers lost, so they stay four and a half back. Minnesota halfway through its schedule is a game under in first place. It's 
wild that you see, you might see this go down to the to the wire with a bunch of teams that are right around 500. You might have three or four teams in it that are just trying to get to 500 to go to the playoffs. Yep. Very well could be. You saw Elvis's numbers against the Angels playing with the Rangers and the, the A's. There's the division in all its glory. Honestly, the first team to get hot is probably going to be the team that does it. And the Sox have a great September schedule. Just have to get there. Line drive left field, base hit. Ben Intendi serves a single, and the Sox have two on with one out. The MLB Ballpark app will complete your next visit to Guaranteed Rate Field. Buy and manage game tickets, redeem offers, access exclusive content, and much more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. Or tonight. Yeah, whenever you want to do it. Yeah, if you're back home, it's tonight. It's if you're here, it's tonight. Yeah. Yeah, but baseball is always feels like daytime when That's you're outside. Right. That's right. Or something. First pitch line foul right side by T.A. How about some hard contact the opposite way. I would be all in on that for T.A. You saying ooh because yeah, he might have got, swung at it. Got that cutter right there and it's if he's looking where I know he is which is right center that one probably looked really good to him he probably was startled that it was that good of a pitch I guess that's why T.A. let it let it drop he's definitely looking to go the other way though. That tickled the inside corner strike three. Two down almost a backup cutter right here I think that Tim thought this was going to back up even more but it just kind of stays right there on the edge. God, it looks off the plate from there but it did, this this zone is going to say it cut a little piece of the strike zone which is a tough one. It, it, it looks ball to you it, though as it, a right hander. It, it right? looked like a ball. Yeah it looked like it never came back to the plate and you're just like how is that a strike and right on the edge gets the call. Here's Luis for ball one. This is the marquee matchup of the game right the White Sox have yet to do much of anything but if anybody's going to do something it's Robert Junior he's got two guys on a chance to put the White Sox up with a big swing of the bat. Huge at bat right here for Robert Junior. Oh a long way foul. Just a little bit out in front of a couple pitches today. We talked about it earlier. You got a 3 0 pitch. He got a fastball that he was looking for, but just hit it off the end of the bat. Hit it hard, but right to the left fielder, about five or six paces in front of the track. Fastball at 99. You know Otani knows this is important he here. Know, he knows it's important. Robert's got to lock it in right here. Otani's going to bring everything he's got. Got to find a way to just scratch a hit, just scratch a run. Find a way to put it in play, and make the defense throw you out. They may soon be teammates in Seattle at the All Star game. Otani and Robert Jr. in the air by Robert down the left field side, and this is arching foul. And that's what 99 will do to you. I mean, you've seen how good Robert's been over the last week, right? So balanced, so in his legs at the end of his swing. And what you've seen tonight against Otani is a guy that is at the top of his game, but still nervous about that fastball at 99. That's how he's so far out in front of that slider. And that's why he's been hooking some balls. It's almost like you want to find a way just to say, I'm not even going to think about the left side of the field right here. Struck him out on a splitter in the zone. Otani navigates through two runners on in the sixth and maintains a shutout. Split piece for strike three. Sox fans, have you always wanted to watch batting practice? I personally have. Okay, well now you can, guy who's taken batting practice. Don't miss your chance for an exclusive pregame experience to watch the Sox and Blue Jays. It's early BP. Offer is available for one more game, Wednesday, July 5th, 
Don't miss your chance to catch a home run in the outfield. Whitesocks.com slash BP. I'm glad you had that promo. That was it's a, made me sweat a little bit. It's like a presentation you worked the whole semester on. <laughs> yeah. How long that was. <laughs> Yikes. One and one for Renhifo, who tripled and scored last time. Here he bounces to Elvis at second, who's had a very nice night. And the old Bozo Grand Prize game scoop to Sheets. Tonight's game is brought to you by Marquette Bank. Marquette Bank is Chicago Land's trusted neighborhood bank and home lender. Check out Marquette Bank at emarquettebank.com. Marquette Bank, love where you bank. One down for Wallach, who's walked twice. Have you ever seen a game where eight guys have walked so far and none of them have scored? No. That's the reason it's still close. That's strike one. He went around, according to Chad Whitson, the first base umpire. Yeah, that's generally walks in the big leagues are the kiss of death. You give people base runners, and eventually they're going to make it hurt. To this point, it has yet to happen. Tonight, a home run for Otani, and then the triple and the run scored in the fourth on the RBI ground out from Fletcher. Tuki Toussaint, 0 oh 2. Struck him out. He goes splitter, strikeout number five, and 10 is still achievable tonight for Sox pitching. Tukey with a nice splitter right here. He's making the most of his appearances so far this year. Wow, really good. Strike the ball in the outside corner, pulls it a little bit, misses his spot. Grandal is able to corral it for another strikeout for Tukey, but he he's looked good. He came in last inning and was able to mop up some base runners and so far in a White Sox uniform Tuki Tucson has been doing his thing. ERA sub two through five plus innings. Left field Benintendi awaits the arrival of the final out of the sixth inning and Tuki Tucson on eight pitches goes one two three two the seventh. for draft night live in the salt shed watch a new era of Blackhawks hockey be ushered in and get breakdowns and exclusive access as the NHL draft unfolds it all starts tomorrow at 6 30 p.m. on NBC Sports Chicago from the salt shed love a good salt shed you have in previous years been the salt shed somebody's got to be that oh up the middle look out Otani Eloy Jimenez just rocked that baseball into center Wow, how did Otani get out of the way? Wow. 110 off the bat, and you can't even see how close this came, but oh, here we go. Oh, oh baby. Look at him. Otani was like, oh my gosh, don't do that again. Don't throw it there. Oh, oh my man. gosh. Whoa. Ooh. Seventh inning brought to you by Road, uh, IDOT, Roadway Safety. It's not a game. It's really not. Safety's no. not a game either. No, that one. And by the way, watching Otani throw that last pitch, it, it, it's got to be in his mind. It's just got to be. That's a major wake up call. You're throwing well, you're throwing well, and all of a sudden a BB gets hit by your head. Here we go. This is fouled back toward us. Above us, everyone's fine. Thank you. I feel like Andrew Vaughn is close to doing something here. He's had those. Are, those are two good swings. The problem is he's fouling them, fouling pitches off that he generally hits. It's up one and two. Big crowd here tonight. It is Japanese Heritage Night. That just so happened to land on Shohei's start. This is all the way to the backstop, and there was no contact. So that's strike three. There's one gone. Eloy to second base, and Yaz is coming up. That was an odd one because Vaughn decides to climb the ladder and foul this pitch off, and it almost looked like he did the way that. Wallach tried to catch the ball, but I just 
missed. See if he catches any piece. No, not close. And you could tell that Vaughn didn't know what he was supposed to do because sometimes you think you got to run the first if they drop the ball, but if there's a guy occupying right. first base, then you're out. Only with two outs can you run to first if yeah. it's occupied. Either way, now there's a runner in scoring position for the White Sox, and one of the guys that's gotten a knock tonight, Rondahl at the plate. Slow cutter on two. You know, for Vaughn, too, you would imagine he runs in part as Webb is warming up. We saw him throw the eighth inning last night because the catcher, Wallach, is scrambling to go get the ball. There's just a lot of moving parts, but indeed it was out number one, so one and two on Yaz. Did disengage there. This is up and out, two and two. Not as though Eloy's going to try to steal third base, but it is worth noting if he does spin to second, that would be the second disengagement. Way outside, three and two. That was his hundredth pitch of the night. Losing a little bit of confidence in that off speed pitch. He's misfired on a couple of them. This has got to be close, if not the last batter of the night for Otani. Phil Nevin watching on. Outside ball four. Yaz takes a walk. So here comes Berger. They're going to leave Otani in. They're going to have a conversation with him out there. It's interesting because you, the way he missed that last pitch and he kind of went to his knees, it almost looked like he thought that was it. Clint Frazier is going to pinch run over at first. Matt Wise, the pitching coach, out of the dugout for the Angels here. And Jake Berger hit a looping line drive to right field pretty well struck line drive actually to right in the fifth inning turned into a double play over at first base so Frazier is on he is the tying run in this game so Sebi Zavala will come in to catch Yaz has had some good at bats and so is Eloy I mean like the only out he's made tonight was an absolute rocket off the bat to right field Basically a one hop, it would have one hop the wall if it hadn't been caught. So Aloy has hit some balls really hard. Good to see. And now there's some talk that there might be some issues. As the trainer and Phil Nevin are going out to the mound. Okay. Never a good sign. And they're gonna make the call to the bullpen. Yeah, Otani's done. To a substantial roar and a standing one now. He leaves with a shutout, but how long will the Angels maintain it? 2 nothing. Sox have two on when we come back. Here's your new pitcher, Jacob Webb. We saw him last night at 1.59 ERA. He's been very good his 16th game of the year tonight. Really good changeup. That 1.59 ERA is good for 24th best in the MLB. So he's one of their guys, and he's in the game in an important spot. He will throw that fastball, four-seamer, and a change. So the four-seamer and that changeup were deadly last night. He threw one inning, struck out two, and the changeup really had some good life and good deception. So look for him to lean on that heavy 
right here with runners at first and second for the White Sox. Jake Berger, the batter. Otani out of the ball game as a pitcher. He can stay as the DH in the two spot in the order in a rule that's basically been named after him. Yep. Lucky. He made out way better than Buster Posey did in the rule named after him. Correct. You could say your friend Buster. Yes, right. There's the arsenal you were talking about. A lot of changeup. A lot of changeups, and you just saw that sweeper, which is also a pretty good pitch for him. We didn't see that much the other night. On the ground towards shortstop. It's a diving play by Fletcher, and the feed to third to get the out. That is a remarkable effort by David Fletcher at shortstop. We'll check and see if the Sox want a challenge. Almost think you, if it's close, you might have to challenge. God. What a play by Fletcher. He knocks it down right here and goes to the only place where he could possibly get it out. Call it third base. And we're going to challenge it. Let's watch it again. I thought real time he was in there, but it was just kind of a weird slide. See, he slides right here and it kind of loses momentum. Oh, he's out. And he's out. I was with you. It looked like he was going to beat it. Yep. And then the slide kind of slowed. Almost like if he had gotten on his belly a little bit, and that's not. Eloy's way that he does it generally you have to slide kind of how you're comfortable doing he's always been kind of a foot first slider and unfortunately for him it kind of grabs the, the the turf right here the dirt and slows him down just enough look he's right there That's right there the call on the field is confirmed yeah the runner is out Chicago will lose their challenge Either way, it's a really good play. You see, if he just stretches out that toe, might have a chance to get in there, but it's a, it's a great play by the shortstop Fletcher. Lloyd just can't get in there in time. Still, White Sox have runners at first and second with Gavin Sheets coming up. Gavin knows he's going to get a good dosage of that changeup, probably. Let's see what he does with it. He is the lead runner in this game at the plate. First pitch. Peter is strike to the outside corner as Keenan Middleton loosens in the Sox bullpen. He just felt like that was going to be safe at third the way it was un mm -hmm. unraveling and unfortunately it was just a really good play. The throw basically from his knees to get you at third. There's the change. Off the bat it looked like a base hit in the first place. It did. Yep. Hit balls hit pretty hard on the ground. Fletcher range and was able to snag it. How many changeups in a row can you throw if you're Webb? I think he can throw as many as he wants, but the way I, I interpreted Gavin's swing on that changeup is he was looking for it because mm -hmm. he took a good hack and he was all over it. It just was a good pitch. Line drive, right field, base hit, Gavin Sheets. He smoked that fastball, and the Sox are on the board. Two strikes, single. Two to one here in the seventh. Huge swing by Gavin. Webb trying to climb the ladder right here. I don't think he threw it as high as he wanted to. Actually, he did, and Gavin's on top of it. It was an amazing job by him to get there. It was a clearly just a purpose pitch. He was just trying to throw it up to go right back to that changeup. Gavin said, I'm just going to go ahead and take this one because I don't want to see that changeup again. Unbelievable at bat. Keeps the White Sox right in this RBI single there for Gavin Sheets, and they're going to get going to get a pinch runner. Adam Hazley. Adam Hazley at first base. The old tomahawk top of the zone, just flat bat path, got on top. It is very difficult to get that to that pitch as a as a hitter. It just you have to have a really good tuck and a really really flat bat path. And he did. So now, Elvis from the nine spot takes a strike. He was hoping with all his might that would fade inside or low. Webb's going to the sweeper more, which probably means that shows why he's so effective all, all, 
most of the time because he generally goes that change up and he can throw another one for a strike. Roll to second base. Drury throws him out. The Angels maintain the lead, but the Sox claw a run across. Stretch time, two to one. Sox have been decided by four or fewer. That dates back to the first series with the Angels. The second longest streak in baseball this season. The Orioles had 24. Pedro Grifol is going through his lineup card, and there are many changes. Zach Remillard is going to come in and play third base. Jake Berger moves over to first. The question is, what does the batting order look like? Considering the pinch runner Frazier, the pinch runner Hazley, they're going to keep Benintendi, Robert Jr., and Jimenez in the outfield. Sebi wants to know if Tukey is ready to go, and he is. Going to throw at least one more warm-up. So it's all been figured out, but that's the defense. New corners for the Sox. And then the catcher, Sebi Zavala, as well, as you see Mike Tozar taking Trying to care of it. All out. Yeah, there's a lot of editing going on, and it's on deadline. Top of the order, Mickey Moniak did not swing at the first pitch, and it looked like it might have been a strike. Sebi was trying to get that pitch for Tukey, unfortunately doesn't catch it and doesn't get the call. If he catches it, probably gets the call. He knew he had to kind of pull it back to the zone. Though. In the air to right field, and Eloy Jimenez. Moniak 0 for 4, 1 for 8 in the series. So Shohei Otani, who walked off with Phil Nevin after a meeting with the pitching coach Matt Wise training staff came out as well Otani will bat. This is last night for Otani. And the moonshot that he hit then tonight he ends up homering as well. And it is the first time he's homered and struck out 10 batters in his career. Something new again for Shohei Otani. I can't believe he hasn't done it already. Shocking. Isn't that amazing to say? Yeah. It's crazy. It's the first time an angel has ever done that. It's a cracked fingernail on Otani is the word. You could see you could see him looking at his nail a little bit and listen he's smart. He's like I've got to be able to pitch at the end of this season. Left field Otani once again opposite field power he's homered twice. His teammates can't believe it. I, I was thinking the same thing. They, they're looking they're like, what are we watching right now? This guy just one handed a ball over the 390 sign out in left center. Just back footed a ball 400 feet. One hand. You're about to see a replay and it's just like, well, what do you do? You just kind of tip your cap and he'll put on a cap for the first time tonight. Did you see Wallach? Yeah. He, in the shot of the dugout? It's like, what? what? This is not that easy. He's been catching him all night, and Chad Wallach just dropped his head like, come on now. Video game type of stuff. I'm, I'm telling you, he, he one handed this ball. <laughs> I, that's, the, that's what you should be seeing on the White Sox faces right now. They're like, what? I mean, we just can't get him out, you know? Tip your cap. And they see him every day. See him every day, and I'm just like, wow. He's put on a show tonight, that's for sure. <laughs> Wave and a miss, one and two on uh, Brandon Drury. And opposite field power like that just doesn't show up either. This was just a flick. I mean, it literally was a one handed flick. Opposite field, just trying to. Find some barrel, and he found some barrel 400 feet away.
first time Shohei Otani in a starting pitching role has homered twice. And you wouldn't imagine the last time. Hey, high five me, but don't touch the one fingernail. It, it, I mean, he just came out of the game as a pitcher. I wish they didn't have that Otani rule where he could stay in the game. That's right. That would have been nice for the White Sox. It would have been nice for you and the White Sox and everybody up here in the Sox TV booth, but for all the viewers that want to watch Otani, then they're. That's. I hope they've been watching because you're getting a show. Oh. Pun completely intended. I, I just. I cannot get over Wallach's reaction. Because he, he's caught him. That he was, knows what he can do. Yeah, that was the first thought I had when I saw the same thing. I was like, these guys can't even believe what they're watching. That's ball four. Watch a home run again, and at the end of it, you're going to see Wallach's reaction. What? This is a one handed and a good pitch, a change up down and away. A good pitch by Tuki Tucson. One handed. He's not even, he's just swinging one handed. Watch how far this ball goes. It just jumps off his bat, too. It, initially, he thought that they would get to it, but they just kept going and going, and next thing you know, he's putting on the, the samurai headgear. Here comes Pedro. Said nice job to Tukey, and he did. He kept the Sox in the ball game, but Otani's home run has made it 3-1 Angels. And a runner at first with one down. Mustakis will be the hitter, and we will step aside. Gregory Santos coming in for the Sox. With the arm sleeve. Watch him. I mean, he's exasperated by the brilliance of his battery mate. It's like, how do you do that? I, I've been trying to do this my whole life as just a hitter. How do you do it? Some things are not taught, and he gets a curtain call. Why not? Gregory Santos in the game, 35th time this year. He's had 39.1 innings pitched so far this year, which is good for 12th most in the big leagues. 2-0 with two holds, 2.75 ERA, very respectable. 23-year-old flamethrower from San Cristobal, Dominican, will feature a fastball that will reach triple digits as Velasquez comes in to pinch run for Brandon Drury. So here we go. It's still a 3 1 game. And Mike Mustak is the batter. First pitch inside ball one. The old 92 mile per hour changeup. You are so glad. So glad you're not hitting. Love the booth. Love, <laughs> love the booth. Man, oh man. I mean, Otani's talked about before wanting to throw like 100, 500, 600, 700, 8. As though two home runs and a starting pitching performance on the same night wasn't enough. The last guy who struck out 10 and homered twice in a game. No one. Zach Granke. Oh, wow. Swing and a miss. There's the throw down to second, and it's not in time. Stolen base. Angels use a pinch runner and get that runner in scoring position.
How about that, Zach Greinke? A couple of homers back in 2019. Grounded foul, two and two. I didn't expect the answer. I figured it was nobody. I, that's you know, yeah. You but I guess you got to remember that pitchers used to hit. That's right. Greinke's a pretty good athlete. Yes. And pretty good hitter throughout his career. Last American leaguer was in 1963, Pedro Ramos for Cleveland. So it's been 60 years since it happened in the AL. That's a base hit, stroke to center by Moustakas. So the stolen base gets the Angels run number four. And it's an overwhelming sound of Moose. I've heard that too many times in my career. He does it again right here for the Angels out here in his new uniform. In his old haunts. 104 off the back ground ball to the right of Elvis Andrews and through the hole. Four to one, Angels. The ninth walk is the first one to score tonight. And I think the White Sox know if, if you're going to walk nine guys, you're just not going to win. I mean, you shouldn't be winning that game. Correct. It, you can't w give nine free passes to an offense in the big leagues. Doesn't matter how good or how bad they're going. It's just not going to happen. And now this one gets away down the right field line. Moustakis chugs into third. And it's unraveling a little bit here in the seventh. Everybody was a little bit surprised. I had kind of put my head down to look at the paper in front of me. Next thing out of the corner of my eye, I see Sebi, and he just kind of was trying to be sneaky. Berger not looking for it. Runner on third base now for the Angels with less than two outs. Taylor Ward in a very good position in 2-0. And Jake just doesn't play a lot of first base. But it was such a sneaky throw that nobody knew it was coming. He got everybody by surprise. At the end of April, the White Sox staff had walked the second most batters in baseball. Only Oakland had walked more, and that was a big part of the reason for that rough start for this team at 7 and 21. Two seamer inside. That's walk number 10 for the Angels. And a big reason that they had kind of climbed out of that, and a big reason why the rotation and and all the pitchers in general, the whole staff, have been at the top of the MLB is because they were attacking the zone more over the last two months. Not afraid to go at people and striking out some of the top numbers in the big leagues. Yeah, it's just especially when your team isn't walking, right? The, the White Sox typically for the year have been last in Major League Baseball or second to last in walk rate by batters. You combine those two things, it's just too many extra base runners. The plus minus is too rough to go on any sustainable win streak. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you just giving up walks is, is not only it's not only bad, it kind of demoralizes a defense because you want them to attack and allow you to make plays behind yep. the pitcher. You want them to attack and, and have trust that you're going to make the play behind you. And so when you continue to walk and you're like, you're not even giving us a chance to help you out, that's that's obviously going to rub any defender the wrong way. Not that they're doing it on purpose. You know that. You know they're trying. You know they're trying to do the right thing, but it's just a it's a tough hill to climb. Turbo sinker there, strike one. Does it hurt your focus as a defender in the it field? It doesn't hurt your focus, but there's some times when you keep walking people as a defender. You're like, come on, man! Like you know, just throw it over the middle of the plate. I'd rather him hit it 400 feet than give him free passes. Pitchers can't think like that either, you know, right? Because if they're thinking like that, then they're going to get hit around. They, you know, they've got their process. Infielders got theirs. Listen, baseball players can find a way to complain about pretty much anything. So, just line drive right at third. Remillard snaps it to first and not in time. Nearly had two. 
Nice reaction right there by Rimelard. That ball was tattooed off the bat of Renfro right at him. Self-defense play by number 28 down at third base, fresh into the game. Almost got it for a double play. Instead, he gets the second out, and Renhifo will bat. By the way, if you're watching the game and you're looking at the box score at MLB.com, a lot of changes for the Sox defensively. And the question is, Zach Remillard and Sebi Zavala, where did they go into the lineup? Because Pedro Griffol could substitute them into either spot. And the box score has Zavala at six and Remillard at eight, but it could very well be switched. So we'll see when that part of the lineup comes up for the Sox, which way it goes. Pedro and Ethan watching four base runners in the inning, including Shohei Otani. Two homers tonight, four times on base for Otani. Ten strikeouts. Once again, he has taken your typical vision of the baseball world and put a kaleidoscope in front of it. That's a good way to put it. Inside by a hair, two and two. If you're going to hang around in this game, this is a big out. Huge, huge. Another thing that's tough for the White Sox is they finally scratch a run in the seventh and then immediately give two back. So one of those kind of momentum killers for an offense. Runner off from first and the innings over. Renhifo strikes out against Santos. But Shohei Otani creates magic again with that baseball bat of his and the arm and the whole deal. Shohei Otani, two homers, ten strikeouts, and one hat. First ever street race is almost here. Join Layla Rahimi for Race by the Lake, an exclusive program featuring insight from drivers, a full breakdown of what to expect this weekend, and more. Friday at 6.30 on NBC Sports Chicago. Sox have got to get to the bullpen here. 4-1 Angels with the lead and the former Astro. The right-hander on the mound. Let us know about it. Yeah, Chris Davinsky's on the mound for the 23rd time this year. 3.33 ERA. He's a native of Long Beach, California. 32-year-old. He's got a .89 whip, which is good for 23rd best in the MLB. So does not give up a lot of hits or walks. Initially a White Sox draft pick out of Cal State Fullerton that tremendous program down the road a bit. He is the rare guy that's actually thrown more same handed change ups than opposite handed change ups. Not as rare as it used to be but still rare he went around oh boy that was a that was like a super macho man. Strike three punch out from Ortiz. Yeah, Ortiz let him know on that one. Check swing, climb the ladder, got that change up, and then it rushes him at the top of the zone, and Benintendi doesn't look like he can. Yeah, a little bit too much dramatics for me, but hey. And that, that'll drive you nuts as a baseball player. You notice that stuff? Oh, my gosh. I mean, th <laughs> think about it. You just had a bad at bat. You know, you're down in three strikes. You check swing, and instead of even asking the third base umpire, the home plate umpire basically starts the chainsaw up. The ground ball to third. That's Renhifo. Join us for the all-new $5 Tuesdays. All fans will enjoy a specially priced $5 concessions menu, including 16-ounce draft beers from Miller Lite or Modelo, Garrett Popcorn Stadium Buttery, Vienna Beef Hot Dogs or Polish Sausages, Beggars Pizza Slices, Nachos, and select Coca-Cola products. For more info, go to WhiteSox.com slash Tuesdays. First pitch fouled away by Robert Jr. 
Can you remember an umpire that had a strike three that really. Tom Hallion. Tornado Tom? Tornado Tom. You didn't like Tornado Tom? Started up. Well, I mean, it didn't really bug me. It was kind of funny to watch. Yeah. Um, but he would just start that chainsaw up big time. Yeah. No, I mean, he, he it was a full on twirl almost. It was, it was wild. We wish Tom the absolute best in retirement, by the way. Tom's a good man. Yeah, he's a nice guy. You know who had a strike three call that you you had to ask him if he struck you out was Joe West. Yeah. At the end of his career, he's like, ah, that was it. That was all you heard. And then you saw him just kind of go and, you know, give you kind of a really slow moving strike three. Many punch. Yeah. And strike three on a slider. And that's that. One, two, three inning for Davinsky. And on the mound. I mean, what do, what do you say? I'm not going to say anything. A lot of strikeouts, two home runs. But what can what can you say? This guy's this guy's legit. We we talked him up mainly because he's that good, and then he shows us why he's that good. Yeah, and and the stuff he does. The as Lopez comes in, Ronaldo's out of the bullpen. Yes, the macro of it, like the big picture, he pitches and he hits. That's one thing, right? But the opposite field power specifically, right? The 100 mile an hour or so fastball. Not only does he do both of them, which is a one of a kind thing, but he does both of them at blazing speed. Yeah, he does both of them at levels that just you don't see often, even for the best of of the DHs or the best of the pitchers. He's at the top of both in the game. It, it, it really is special to see. I mean, it's the first time I've watched him pitch and he was he was as advertised. So it's Ronaldo Lopez facing Wallach in strike one. The Sox in the ninth will bring up Jimenez and then Vaughn and then the sixth spot. Pulled off that slider 0 2. Back to back nights for Lopez. You would imagine he would be down tomorrow. Another 638 Pacific time start, 838 in the central time zone. Jaime Berea, Lucas Giolito on the hill. Lucas back to Southern California where he grew up. Sadly for him, Bill Walton won't be in the booth tomorrow. He's got to deal with us. We could do a more sane interview of Casey Giolito. Lucas's brother. One and two. And it's a slider. Two balls, two strikes on Wallach. Ten walks. One has scored so far for the Angels tonight. Two solo homers. A one out triple scored as well. Roped foul. To third and Zach Remillard for Berger. Let's go to the studio, see what's coming up on Subaru White Sox post game live with Chuck and Ozzy, guys. Salty <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> Thank you guys. Appreciate it. I like Ozzy's form of a tease. It's ask the question and then before the show, answer it for you. Remillard cuts off the ball and makes the play two down. It's the right play by Remillard. Good job. It's hit really soft. A good runner at home plate. So he goes ahead and just cuts Tim Anderson off, which is fine because he's got to get to this ball quick. Tim's coming right behind him. 
you prefer that for the third baseman. I do because as you can see right here too. T.A. was having to move back to his left. That ball was kind of tracking back towards second base. So Rimlar good job by cutting that off. That's a that's a third baseman's ball when it's hit soft. Even if it's hit right at the shortstop, it, it's your call if you want to go cut that off and throw it to first. I thought it was a pretty good play. One ball, one strike for Moniac, who's nothing for four today. Shohei Otani is on deck. Best case scenario is you face him in the bottom of the ninth. I do hope we face him in the bottom of the ninth. It means the White Sox had a great top of the ninth. But first this, White Sox players will chip in for charity at Field of Greens presented by Modelo on Monday, August 14th. Limited sponsorships and foursomes are available for this year's celebrity golf outing. For more information, go to whitesox.com slash golf. You shot okay today. Yeah, I did. Not a bad day. Strike three, inning over. One, two, three, inning for Lopez. Sox need some runs. White Sox checking an official White Sox debit card, only available at your local Wintrust Community Bank. Wintrust.com slash Sox. Carlos Estevez will come into the game 34th game so far this year. He's perfect in saves with the opportunities. 19 for 19 so far this season. He'll have another opportunity at that at tonight against the four, five, and six hitters in the White Sox order. He's been really good against right-handed batters. As you can see, 19 straight saves to start a season. Ties that franchise record held by Lee Smith in 1995. To open the season 19 consecutive saves and Lee Arthur Smith had a big old number 478 saves in his career a Hall of Famer in his own right. Third in saves all time Mariano number one Trevor Hoffman number two. First pitch cracked to left center field and the Sox will have a base runner here as that goes bounding all the way to the wall. Eloy has smoked three baseballs tonight for hits and then another searing line drive for his only out. Yeah you said it took the words right out of my mouth every time he's hit a ball tonight it has been absolutely rocketed he has not missed the barrel once. And he's being he, every spot that he's hit the ball, he's hit it all over. Down the left field line, deep left center field, liner to right. All four over 100 miles an hour for Eloy Jimenez. First pitch, outside ball one to Andrew Vaughn, and you never know. You never know. Sox got a hit off Estevez last night. It was a single for Robert. He got wiped away on a double play. That's a line drive base hit into right field it goes. Here comes Jimenez. It is four to two here in the ninth. Don't count them out just yet. Another good at bat. They're coming out hacking. They're not waiter waiting around. Takes one pitch but gets another one in the middle of the plate and does a good job to stay through that ball. Look actually on the inside corner. Good job by Bonnie to go the other way. Take his single. That was on purpose right I mean he's not trying if, if he was trying to pull the ball he would have grounded that ball to the third baseman so he's clearly trying to go the other way good approach RBI single and as we anticipated it is Zach Remillard in the sixth spot Pedro had his choice of who to bat where he goes Remillard at six so Remillard is up with Vaughn at first and one ball one strike. So Zavala is in the eighth spot. Jake Berger is next. Up the middle into center base hit again. And some sparse booze here. Rimlar. Every time I've seen him he's done something good in the game slider down and away good job to stay on it right back up the middle. 
not trying to do too much. Really nice. White Sox got something cooking now. When's the last time you saw a burger bomb? You know what? It was during the last homestand. And honestly, you know, it's late night in Chicago. Yeah. People have had dinner already. They might have sort of had that dinner get processed by their bodies. You got to grab a snack late mm -hmm. night. Why not? I mean, it can be a slight little burger bomb slider. OK. All right. I feel it. Let's see. Three straight hits and no cheapies. Three baseballs that got hurt. First pitch. Upstairs, ball one. Just when you think the White Sox are going to go quietly into the night, all of a sudden, bang, 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 and they're down two runs here with two men on, nobody out. Sox had five hits before this inning started. They have three in the inning. Would have been ball two. Yeah, I got a little excited. Estevez has not allowed four hits in any game this year. He's given up three already. There's nobody out. And Jake wants his timeout. Little antsy on the high yeah, pass. He, he was getting excited. He's like, okay, I can feel this. We're starting to hit the ball. Get me to the plate. I get 1 0. Okay, I'm going to get a cookie right here. And that's what happened. Chased a pitch up and in, and then followed it up with another one. Got to find a way to claw back into this at bat now. One and two on the ground, second base side. Fletcher runs it down. Bobbles, throws to first, not in time. Base is loaded. Out of the absolute clear blue, the Sox have a major rally here in the ninth. What just happened? What just happened? It's still happening. They're going to give this a hit. Good job going the other way. He gets basically the same pitch. He's like, I'm not going to try to do too much with it. Another good approach by a White Sox going the other way. And this is not an easy play to make. But you definitely thought Fletcher, when he gloved this, was going to make it. Strike one for Sebi Zavala. And the first nice play by an angel in this inning after a sterling eight innings was the play that the fan just made on the foul ball. Leaned over the railing and was able to snag it. Base is loaded here, Mr. Jason. 4 2. A one pitch foul back. It's nothing in two. Contact is so paramount here for Sebi Zavala. He came in after the seventh inning. Top of the seventh inning, Grandal walked. Pedro used a pinch runner, Clint Frazier. Then he pinch ran for Gavin Sheets with Adam Hazley. Sebi came out of the game last night for Grandal. As this is up, it's one ball and two strikes. Sebi's got to find a way to lower his sights. The only place that Estevez so far has had some luck tonight is top of the zone, out of the zone. And Sebi swung at a couple of them. Got to find a way to lower his sights. Castro challenged in middle, middle, one down. him up with 98. Sevy one and two is not able to put the bat on the ball. Strikeout. Bases loaded. Still for the White Sox. Now one out and Elvis Andrews at the plate with a chance to tie it. Possibly put the White Sox up. Elvis walked off Boston on Saturday. Called a strike. Gave him whiplash. It was right to the point of that zone on the screen. Kendall Graveman getting loose in the Sox bullpen just in case. Going to Estevez is throwing himself like a bowler with the ball going down the lane. 
at these pitches. Yeah, that one at 99 above the zone. Elvis tries to get to it and can't. Down 0 2. Just as quick as they get the bases loaded, it looks like it. Seves is trying to shut the door. Uh oh. Now the ground is short. Velasquez, low peg. Fletcher turns it. And the Angels somehow, some way, get out of it. White Sox gave a furious comeback right there. You thought it might end differently. Unfortunately, that 0 2 pitch, just trying to put it in play, and it goes right to the shortstop. 6 4 3, ball game over. White Sox showed some good fight at the end there, but Shohei Otani was too much for the White Sox tonight. It's quite the ride and a heck of a comeback effort, but again, the Angels get the better of the Sox here in the Pacific time zone. So see you tomorrow, Gordon. See you tomorrow. All right, for our producer, Chris Withers, our director, Dave Turner, our associate producer, Chris Kamka, our entire wonderful crew, for Joe Collins, John Shipman, Kevin Cross, everybody at NBC Sports Chicago. For John Reynolds up here, for Gordon Beckham, I'm Jason Benetti. We say farewell from the big A. 4-2, your final score. The Angels beat the Sox and drop the Sox to 34 and 47. Angels 44 and 37. Chuck Garfine, it's all yours. Subaru White Sox post game live.